I'm Marion King with Photog Adventures, and tonight we're gonna learn how to edit our time lapses with Lightroom and Photoshop. Your very first step in a time lapse is identifying where the time lapse begins and where the time lapse ends. This is the last frame. You turned off the camera. But sometimes when you turn off the camera, it's halfway through the exposure. And if it is, you might get a much darker last frame. And so when I look at this and go, okay, each one has a good amount of exposure. When I hit information, hitting I, I see that's 30 seconds and 30 seconds. Both of them were full 30 seconds, so I know that this last frame is good. That's definitely the last one. I can mark it if I wanted to. For the sake of good practices, let's go ahead and give it a color and say, hey, this is the end of my time lapse, the blue one on that end. But then let's go to the very beginning and look at what makes the beginning. And the beginning is far more difficult. For instance, here's me just getting a camera ready, getting focus going, turning around, changing my focus, getting my composition, the clouds are up there. All right, and then I'm settling on a composition. So when you start looking at the beginning of your time lapse, what you're first paying attention to is when do I stop moving the camera? Okay, I stop moving the camera on this frame. So now between this frame and this frame, is this automatically the first one? No, it's not automatically the first one because you need to make sure that when you took this picture, you were also starting the time lapse. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting I on my screen on my keyboard to make sure it shows the information up here. And this information is going to give me a timestamp. And so I can look at the first images, 440, 441, 443. I mean, those are giant jumps and leaps in time. So I'm going to make sure I guarantee pick one that's not. Uh, 43 to 45, obviously time skipped. 45.38 to 45.02. Yeah, I'm confident that 45.02 is the very first one. I'm going to color that one blue. This is much more helpful. I want purple. Much more helpful because then I have... You know, I'll ignore the rest of these images here. I'm going to go into my edit now of this single frame. And then I'm going to sync it across to all images. If you want to learn more about how to edit something simple like this, watch this video up here. I'm linking right now above me in this corner. There is a pop-up from YouTube that's telling you about another video I have where I go into processing an image, and you can learn how to post-process a simple edit to a Milky Way image up there. I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm just going to show you how I make a time lapse. And so how I edit this is not significant, but here's the before and after. So this is pretty good. You can be much more forgiving to your edit when, you're know, when you know it's gonna be a time lapse because it's gonna look better than you realize once the animation is happening to it. So I have an edit and I'm gonna go ahead and sync these to all my other images. When you're syncing settings, make sure you sync the edits that you've done. Typically, the default sync settings are not going to be a big difference than what you did, but make sure you double check your sync settings before you hit synchronize. And there it goes. And it's completely synced. All of those settings are there. Now I right click and I say export, and I'm going to choose my export settings. The naming option that you have in this drop, bot, drop down is custom name X of Y, custom name original file number, custom name sequence, custom name data file, and then you can create your own. But right now, all I want is custom name sequence. So I can give it any name I want. Well, this is 2024 Hoodoo Village and dash one. I can say time lapse if I wanted to, or just, you know, obviously it's a time lapse. Hoodoo Village, 2024 Hoodoo Village. Okay, cool. So now it's called 2024 Hoodoo Village dash one. And every single image in here is going to get a different dash number, dash one, dash two, dash three, dash four. And that creates the sequence. Last thing that's important in here is that you want to make sure that you don't render it out as a giant file. So the first thing you should think about is just the resolution. Let's just go there, even though it's not the very next setting. Let's resize to fit. We choose our long edge and do 1920. So it's nice and small, and it looks good on, a, on your phone. Well, then the other thing to consider is, do I resize them? Right here on file settings, I can change my format from the raw to a TIFF, the raw to a JPEG, raw to a PNG. You want to choose JPEG. 
And the best kind of quality but minimal file size that you can get for an internet shared photo is JPEG at quality 77. My friend Jeff Harmon has figured that out through multiple tests, and he found that 77 is just the best return of investment. Small file size, quality looking image. When you compare them side by side to 77 and 100, sometimes it's impossible to tell. And so it's great that the file size is so small and as tight as possible and hit export. So now Lightroom is going to export my images. And once it has finished, we're going to go into Photoshop and open these images and create that time lapse video. All right. So here we are in Photoshop. I've already exported all of the images out of Lightroom and I'm ready now to bring each of them in to create the final video time lapse. These steps are very simple. I'm going to go through them very quickly, but it's a bit complex and you don't know where certain things are so I created a PDF to help you out and this tip sheet right here is a one sheet tip sheet that has all the steps we're about to go through so you don't have to remember them in the description down below there's a link that you can click on and then give me your email and I will email you this tip sheet so you have it always here's the steps we start off with open and you navigate to the images that you opened up. You'll see the sequence from one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to however many you've got, and I have 211. So what do you do? Do you select this and then start shift clicking and selecting everything? No, 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 no. You don't have to select all the images. There's a cool thing about this where the computer recognizes that it's a sequence. The program knows, hey, this is gonna be an image sequence. All you have to do is choose number one, select just that. But then down below, there is this little checkbox that you can check for image sequence. Now, if you're on a Mac right now and not a PC, you're not gonna see the image sequence box already. You most likely will have it shortened and there's an options button that you can click to show more options. And when you open up more options, then within those options, you'll see your own box for image sequence or treat this as a sequence, something about a sequence. And you'll see image sequence there, hit the checkbox, and now with one selected of all your sequence and you click the box, then you can click open. Now, the first thing it prompts you is this window. You may not see it pop up. It'll pop up somewhere, but it's a small little window asking you what frame rate you want to do. A quick lesson on frame rate is that it's the number of images you want to count for a second. The way that things work on video, you have 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 are the common usage. You're commonly using 24, 30, or 60 in your video render. In this case, dealing with a time lapse, most scenarios, not ex not 100%, but most scenarios, going down as far as 12 frames per second is going to work. And the reason why I love this is because 12 frames per second means all I needed was 120 images to get 10 seconds of video. And to have as long of a time lapse as possible is absolutely the goal. I have 211 images, so at 12 frames per second, I'm almost gonna have 20 seconds of video. I recommend using 12 frames per sec. 12 is gonna be fantastic. So I've chosen 12 frames per second and now I've opened up the image and it just kind of looks like a regular Photoshop image. It doesn't seem like a video. Um, it's got one layer. It's called it under video group right here, but I mean, that's not very helpful. The thing that you're not knowing and that you wouldn't know is that you should go up here at the top of Photoshop and find window and then open up the window that handles video clips. And that is called timeline. You wouldn't have guessed it, but timeline is the one you should choose to open up and see your video clip. Without that window and timeline chosen, you won't see this down here and it won't work like you expect. So first things first, you go up to window, choose timeline, you can see the video clip, and then I would just hit spacebar. What happens when you hit spacebar is it starts rendering a preview. You can see how it's going through each frame and drawing them together and then rendering it all into a preview that it can watch. You saw how choppy, you can see how choppy it was there as it was rendering the preview, but once the preview is fully rendered, now you hit play again with spacebar and it plays nice and smooth. <laughs> uh, look at that. You can see the Milky Way coming in and then going up the side of the rock. Man, the clouds really opened up for us. It's so nice that when you do a time lapse and hope for the clouds to move, that they accommodate and actually go away. Because that was a really blocked eastern view, and it was going to block all of the core, but the clouds continued moving through. Oh, thank goodness. 
you can still see like a little shimmering and waves of some thick or thin clouds, but for the most part, it's thin enough and you can see a lot of the Milky Way. Gosh, dang, I love that. That turned out really well. Let me just show you that again real quick to make it easy for you. Just a quick reminder of everything that we just did. Because the next step is just to add music and save it off. So you go to open, you navigate to the first image of your sequence. Uh, four, three, two, okay, here's one. You select number one. You turn on options and see image sequence or in Windows, you just already see it. Image sequence box is right there. Make sure it's checked, hit open. Choose 12 frames per second from the options, 12 frames per second, okay. And then when you open it, you have to make sure you go to window and make sure that your timeline was actually on. This is really cool, but it needs some music. It's not the same with just by itself. Well, the cool thing about Photoshop is it already knows that you probably want an audio track. So it added an audio track, and then there's this tiny little carrot right here where you click on that and add audio. I ended up using a song that's nice and soft, and it's really long. Um, down here, you'll notice this little, this little mountain. Go ahead and zoom out. We wanna see the entire clip. So the song is obviously much longer than the video clip. So what you just gotta do is just bring this back to the length of the video clip and then leave it as is and render the video. That's very simple. You know, that's the simple way to do things and you'll, much be, you'll be much happier just keeping it simple and not messing with too many things. But what if I wanted to just see the time lapse again and have some more of the song? You can go ahead and just select the clip do control C or command C for copy, and then control V or command, command V for paste. Copy and paste and paste. And now that is under a minute, and we have everything with an audio track of music underneath three replays of our time lapse. And because it's gonna stop suddenly, I don't want that to happen. I'm gonna right click here and change a fade in or fade out. This is the audio track and I right click the green bar and I have an option now to change a fade in or a fade out. In this case, it already had a slow buildup in the fade in, so I don't need to change anything on the in, but on this song, it will not be finished at the very end of this clip. So let me just add a quick five seconds. So when I hit enter, that committed five seconds. So I hit five, enter, it made a five second fade out, and let's go ahead and preview that. All right, the preview is complete. I'm gonna to go to kind of this part of the clip and just watch the end. So playing the music. Oh yeah, that fade out sounds natural. That fade out is nice and natural. Then the whole clip has a beginning fade in, a fade out at the end, and now it's pretty solid. So we have our clip. We've decided to copy it three times just so that we have a longer clip and we get to see that beautiful time lapse one more, two more, three more times. And here we go. Let's go ahead and render the video. We have something that's cool in Photoshop. I want to export the video so now I can text it to my buddies. Go to File, down to Export, and then go over to Render Video. The Render Video dialog here, all of the default settings, just leave them as is. There's no reason to change them at all. Just keep them exactly as they are. That's fantastic. And then just change your name and the location where you want to save it. Select the folder. I've chosen my Milky Way Wednesday 2024 Time Lapses folder. Great. Select. And let me change the name. Um, let's call this the 2024 Hoodoo. Oh, I didn't write Hoodoo. Hoodoo Village TL. Now the video is a TL, so I know that it's time lapse, and I'm going to export this video. And depending on your speed of computer, this will be a fast process or a lengthy one to maybe get a sandwich or a quick drink. I might get a drink. 
It's very satisfying to come away with your time lapse that easy to have a video of it. And now this file, I can send it to myself, I can send it to friends. This is such an easy process with just a few steps to remember. Here's my PDF that's gonna remind you about the steps that we just went through. This will be a quick guide to get you through this step so that you can repeat it on your own. Just go ahead and click on the link down below and you get an email from me with this PDF. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures. Make sure you get out there and have an adventure of your own.